Hi, I'm Lynette, aka London Makeup Artistry, and welcome to my channel. Today, I have an exciting video. I'm bringing you my shopping strategy for IMATS New York 2018. If you like these types of videos, go ahead and hit the like button and consider subscribing because I do these types of videos along with other beauty related videos here on my channel every Saturday. And hit that little notification bell because you know what comes after the IMATS shopping strategy video? the IMATS haul video, and you don't want to miss that. So I made some notes because I don't want to forget anything and I don't want to ramble on and make this video too long. It's probably going to be long because anytime I make videos where I just talk, I talk a lot. <laughs> so it's probably going to be a long video, but hopefully not too long. Okay, so IMATS. What is IMATS? IMATS is the International Makeup Artist Trade Show, and it is annual. It's a show for professionals in the makeup industry, makeup artists, people that work in, in the beauty industry, and they have exhibits, they have, like, I went last year for the first time, and they had models at the different booths being made up in period makeup. They had one guy that they were doing full body paint on. Uh, they have demonstrations and presentations. One of the presentations I went to, um, it was a professional FX makeup artist who had done work on the one of the Star Wars series on television. And so he had talked about the makeup that they did for the Borg Queen. Resistance is futile. And he actually had a model that was made up like the Borg Queen there. So that was really interesting. And then of course, there are all the vendors. There are major mainstream brands there, makeup brands and indie brands there and they are selling products at a discount. <laughs> now I don't know that IMATS was always open to the public. I'm not sure. I kind of feel like it wasn't and that maybe in recent years um, they made it open to the public but if I'm wrong about that let me know in the comments below. But IMATS here in New York is April 13th through the 15th and Friday night is open only to professionals. So um, on Friday night only professionals get to shop and you have to have some kind of credentials to prove that you are um, a professional in the industry. And then Saturday and Sunday it's open to the public. So you have to buy tickets and they are not cheap. Here in New York, the show is $65 plus $3 fee that they throw on top of that for a total of $68. So it's not cheap to go to the show. And, you know, I do feel some kind of way about paying money to buy a ticket in order to go somewhere where I'm going to give you more of my money. But I really want to go get that makeup at a discount. So this is what I have to do. <laughs> Now, I am going to be sharing with you my shopping strategy. It's really more like a plan of attack for when I go <laughs> to IMADS. And then I'm going to tell you what the benefits and advantages are to being prepared and going with a plan. I used the same plan last year and it worked really well. I had a really good time too, so I'm definitely going to employ it again this year and I thought I would make a video just telling you how it is I get prepared <laughs> to go shopping. <laughs> now, the first thing I do after purchasing my ticket, you purchase the tickets online, is I devise a budget. Numero uno, make a budget because <laughs> I don't have an infinite amount of money so I have to have a budget for how much I'm going to spend and I try to stay within that budget. Now after I have decided what my budget is going to be then I go online and to the IMAT site and they have a list of brands that are going to be there. So I do an inventory of the brands and I go back from the time that I buy my ticket to the time that IMATS 
get to here. In between that time, I go back and I will check the list every so often because they do update it. So they might add more brands as the time for the show draws near. So I make a list immediately of the brands that I'm interested in perhaps purchasing products from. After making a list of the brands that I'm looking to purchase from, I prioritize the list. So there's a brand that I want to hit first and then two and then three and then the other brands. Yes. Um, last year, the first brand I wanted to go to was Makeup Forever because I didn't have any of their single eyeshadows. And of course, over the years, I hear Makeup Forever had great shadows. So I definitely wanted to pick up some of them. So I um, made them number one on the list of brands that I wanted to go to first. This year, I think it's going to be Dose of Colors because they have a couple of things that I really want to make sure I get. So I might go there first. I don't know. But after I've prioritized the brands that I want to go shop at, then I check out the floor plan. Yes, online IMAS has a floor plan and yes, I check out the floor plan. I'm I'm not playing any games. This is serious business, okay? This is a once a year opportunity to buy makeup at a discount. And we're talking from like 20 to 40%, 20 to 50% discount, okay? So <laughs> yes, this is serious business. So I do check out the floor plan and then I map out according to the brands that I want to visit um, where they are. Okay, so now I have the brands I want to go to. I kind of have an idea of where they're going to be and I have my list of products that I'm interested in picking up. And then um, for the day of the show, I want to make sure that I get there early because I figure the earlier the better. Um, I went for the first time last year and I wanted to get there when the show opened. I believe it's from 9 to 5. And that didn't happen. <laughs> um, I had to do my look and then I got to take public transportation and plus public transportation on the weekends into the city. It's a crapshoot. So I didn't end up getting there until 11 o'clock, but it turned out to be a great time because there was no line to get in and there weren't very many lines there once I got into the event. So I'm going to try and do that same thing this year and try to get there earlier so that I have time to shop without it before it gets too crowded. Now, what are the benefits and advantages to having a shopping strategy and a plan of attack? Well, I will tell you. <laughs> Number one, for me, having a plan um, really helped me to stay focused and disciplined because I'm going to a place that it's like a warehouse. It's a big event space and there are lots of brands there. So there's the potential of like being like a little kid let loose into the candy store. Oh, makeup, makeup, discounted makeup. Oh, right now. <laughs> We don't want that. <laughs> so for me, having a plan um, really helped me to stay focused and to stay disciplined. It also helped me to stay within budget. And I stayed within budget last year. This was my budget and this was me in my budget. But I was under the budget. <laughs> So having a budget and having a plan already mapped out of the things that I was hoping and looking to get really helped me to stay within my budget. And I'm planning to stay under budget this year. I'm planning to stay even way more under budget than I did last year. This is my hope anyway. <laughs> Cause you know, I'm going to IMAS, but I really am committed to trying to spend less money than I've been spending on makeup. And so for me, having a list already done um, really helped me to do that. Throughout the show, when I made purchases, I kept a running tab of the money I had spent to make sure that I in fact didn't go over budget because for me going over budget would have really dampened the experience that I had. I had a great time last year and part of the reason why I had such a good time is because I had control over my spending. If I had come home and found that I had spent two, $300 over budget, 
I would have really sucked. I would have really felt bad. So um, it really did help me to stay within my budget and staying within budget really helped me to enjoy the experience that much more. Now, having the floor plan and making note and knowing where the booths were going to be saved me time in essence, because I wasn't like, okay, wandering around, it's a big event space, wandering around, oh, where's Kat Von D, where's Makeup Forever, where's Dose of Colors, and wasting time wandering around trying to find the, the brands I wanted to go to and get there before the lines got too long. Um, having the floor plan and already knowing, having an idea of where these booths were saved me time. So this way, okay, I know Dose of Colors is that way. Makeup Forever and ABH and Anastasia Beverly Hills are like adjacent to one another, boom, boom, boom. I know this isn't for everybody, <laughs> but I guess I have a little type A personality traits and I have some maybe one or two OCD traits and so this is what I do <laughs> when I do my shopping at IMAX. <laughs> and it's really only at IMAX, it's nowhere else. <laughs> also, having the product list, not only did it help keep me disciplined and focused on what it is I went there to get, but it also saved time as well because for example, at Dose of Colors, last year there was a long line of people waiting to get in so that they could swatch things and look and and I knew last year that the only thing, I only wanted one thing from Dose of Colors last year and that was one of their eyeshadow palettes, the Marvelous Mauve's eyeshadow palette. I went to, there was a lady standing there. So I went to her and I said, listen, I'm only interested in buying this one product. Can I just go and pick it up? And she said, sure, no problem. Sent me right to the cashiers. They already had the item. She had a little radio or whatever. They already had the item pulled when I went to the register my stuff and I was out. It really does serve you well to have a list of the things that you know you want to get because that may save you time as well. And then at every booth I asked what the discount was because I wanted to know how much of a discount was I getting and was it worth me picking up spending that money right there when like oh okay well this isn't a big deal I can always wait um, for Sephora to have their 20% off VIB sale later on in the year and then I could take th that money I was going to spend on that product where I'm not really getting a great discount and go and spend it over here where they're doing 40% off. So most of the brands for the most part the smallest discount was 20%. There were some indie brands that didn't have any discount and uh, they were selling their stuff at full price and I did buy one of those products because you know I was trying to support but <laughs> um, I think for the most part the, the smallest discount was 20% and then the highest discount that I came across was 50% and that was at Makeup Forever. Not, not everything at Makeup Forever was 50% off. They had different percentages for different products but the eyeshadows that I went there for were 50% off. And then Delium Tools had 40%, MAC had 30%. So I always ask every booth I went to if it wasn't displayed, some of them had product lists and telling you how much of a discount you were getting um, and for those that didn't I just asked hey what's the discount today and when they told me I decided oh yeah that's either money I'm going to spend today because I'm not going to find that anywhere else once I leave here or okay I can hold off on that and maybe buy something else at a bigger discount because I'll know later on during the year they're probably going to have that same discount sale going on. And that's it guys that is my shopping strategy for IMAX New York 2018. Um, it might seem like a bit much for some folks <laughs> it might seem like oh uh, maybe I'm sucking some of the fun out of it but it's for me it worked and once I was able to get the items that I know that I wanted to visit the booth that I know I wanted to go see then I spent the rest of the time just walking around checking out new brands maybe indie brands I had never heard of before or taking a look at products that eh, I was kind of on the fence about so I had some time now to to touch some films watch them and see what it is I like I stopped by the Haku hold on it's like all right what do these brushes actually feel like that cost this much money so I really did end up having a really nice time I got a lot of my shopping done pretty early so I was able to walk around and just watch demonstrations or see exhibits and by the time it started to get really crowded at IMATS 
I had pretty much done my shopping for the most part and had gotten most of the things that I had went there to get. So um, I was spared a lot of the aggravation and the frustration of maybe standing on an hour, two hour line in order to get some items. So this is the strategy that worked for me last year this is the strategy i am going to use again this year and i want to thank you for joining me today if you got any value out of this video then please go ahead and hit that like button and consider subscribing and hit that notification bell too because after the strategy video I will be doing the haul video once I go to IMATS and you're not going to want to miss that. <laughs> um, I hope to see you again next week. Until then, bye-bye.